The Eels come into the game as the 1986 minor premiers and a win will see them go straight to the grand final. Their team, Delroy at fullback, Chalmers, Cronin, Ella, Groth and Kenny, Sterling, Price, Muggledon, Laurie, Lee Beater, Mosley and Bugden. Well, the Bulldogs had a convincing win last weekend over Souths and if they can topple the Eels, they'll be there to defend their title on September 28th. Here's their team. Curry, Farrah, Hagen, Chris Mortimer, O'Brien, Lamb, Steve Mortimer, Langmack, Robinson, Dunn, Peter Johnston in 23, Mark Bugden and Tunks. The referee for this major semi-final is Michael Stone. Parramatta running with uh, a very strong breeze at their backs in the first half. They kicked off, which indicates to me that Canterbury elected to run into the breeze in the first half. And Steve O'Brien is the second bulldog tackled about five metres out from his line. This is Paul Dunn. Muggledon coming over the top with Bugden. Three tackles gone for Canterbury. Robinson met by Lee Beater at Mosley. And that's Mortimer. And this is Tunks. Templar, Sterling and Price together with Lee Beater. And Canterbury have only advanced about... 12 metres with those tackles, and here they are trying to clear. As I said, it's a very strong wind. And Groth <coughs> takes the tackle eventually five metres into Canterbury's area. Now it's Cronin's turn. Tackled by Johnston and Dunn. Mosley. There's Lee Beater. In the middle of the cricket ground pitch, which is very greasy today. Kenny Bella, oh, that Kennedy player is hurt. Brett Kenny is indicating that the Canterbury player is injured. I think it's O'Brien as Sterling puts the kick in. Curry goes back, and it's going to be a place kick at the middle of the 22 to restart. And it was Steve Ella tackled by Steve O'Brien, and O'Brien is still receiving attention. Just looked like Ella might have unintentionally caught him with a, with a forearm as he was falling in the tackle and might have hit O'Brien somewhere around the, around the throat region. Dunn and Mortimer combining to offload to Chris Mortimer, but the original pass came from Johnston. It was a good pass from him too. Peter. Langmack. 10 metres on his side of the halfway. Canterbury still playing with 12. Dunn. Parramatta tackling in threes and fours. Steve Mortimer, his kick is a good one. Bounces about a meter inside the touchline and then kicks over. So a scrum will go down about eight meters on Parramatta's side of the halfway. O'Brien back on his feet. There's the lowers. South squeaked home 8 7 against West and Parramatta 11 East nil. This is Tony Chalmers, who's tackled by Paul Langmack. And O'Brien is not well. He's being assisted by Larry Britton, the trainer. I'm pretty sure Canterbury will, will get him out of there. He's wobbling around as the ball goes away to Cronin. The ball went forward, I thought, to Laurie, but he's allowed to go, and he's tackled eight metres on his own side of the halfway. Langmack calling for numbers over on the right as Parramatta go to the left, and it's Lee Beater who gets through Robinson, but coming over the top was Tunks was done. And play again, very close to the centre of the ground as Bugden reaches the halfway line and five tackles are gone. And Sterling will use this breeze. It's gone to the right to Muggleton, the optional kicker. And he's plugged it down in behind O'Brien's wing. O'Brien is with it now. Chalmers makes the tackle. O'Brien playing the ball 12 metres out from his own line. This is Curry. An important game to say the very least. The winner going straight to the grand final with a week's rest. And the loser to play Balmain. And as far as Canterbury is concerned, I guess they, they wouldn't want uh, an appointment with the Tigers next Sunday. Penalty goes to Canterbury, Parramatta inside the five. So down on their own 22, Canterbury will clear four and a half minutes of time gone first half Canterbury's job is quite 
Quite a simple one with the breeze into their teeth is just a hang in there. And uh, turn around with the the gale at their back in the second half. Away to Mortimer and on to Lamb. And now it's to Hagen playing in the centres this afternoon. What's probably influenced their decision is they'd be expecting Parramatta to be a little short of match fitness. And so if the Bulldogs can turn around with the breeze at their back, use a big kicking game, that's going to tie Parramatta even further in the second half. Here's Robinson crossing the halfway line. That was Cronin. Price came over the top. Away now to Steve Mortimer, and it's gone on to Terry Lamb, but he's uh, tackled out there by John Muggledon. Mosley coming in as well. And another penalty going to Canterbury. Against Parramatta for stealing the ball. And this was the tackle. Three of them involved. The tackle well and truly affected when Lee Beater went in there and snatched the ball away from the Canterbury player. Ball done, getting some attention. Back down the ground. As we see the tap taken by Mark Bugden. Brother against brother today. Steve Mortimer. And it's his brother Chris. Paul Dunn back on his feet. As Terry Lamb is tackled by Ray Price and Peter Sterling. Long ball out to Paul Langmack and Langmack is put down by Mosley. 32 metres from the Parramatta line. Steve Mortimer, tackled by Mosley, got it away to Langmack. Langmack is held by Price and Lee Beater. And five tackles have gone now for Canterbury. Steve Mortimer. Decide to work that blind side and it's been knocked on by Canterbury. So it'll be a scrum with a Parramatta feed about 30 metres out. And a penalty to Parramatta. I, I can tell you that Parramatta are, are not incensed, but they're quite perturbed by, by Canterbury's... Um, as the ball swings to the right to Chalmers. Canterbury have made it clear that they're not real happy with Kevin Roberts, and Parramatta are continually complaining that they seem to be getting their way. As we see Michael Stone with the whistle again today. Here's Bugden. Oh, Dunn went in for a shoulder charge on the on the big fellow. It's probably not the best best way to go about tackling Jeff Bugden. Well, he looks all right. So does Dunn as it goes to Kenny, and it's uh, out with Michael Croner now, who's wrapped up by Terry Lamb. Sterling. The torpedo punt from Sterling should find touch. And does about 15 metres out from the Canterbury line. Well, that got a lot of wind assistance, that kick. It was just a simple little torpedo punt. Curry sweeping it to Lamb, and Lamb is cut down by Delroy. And Steve Mortimer now out to the 22 and tackled by Muggleton. Price over the top of him. And now it's done. Canterbury with three tackles have taken play to the 30 metre point. His Tunks stands, gets it back to Bugden. Bugden takes the tackle of Laurie. Steve Mortimer. A little chip ahead by Mortimer and he regathers possession. That's five gone. Lamb sweeps it away to Langmack. Langmack back inside then and finds Johnston. That's the turnover. Copybook tackle by Price. Ten metres his side of the halfway. A quick play the ball by Parramatta. And for the second time in this game, Canterbury on the sixth tackle elected. Rather than kick into this strong breeze, they spread the ball out looking for their wingers. Now it's Sterling. Kenny. Kenny is, I thought for a moment, able to get it away to Laurie. He opted out of it. And a penalty goes to Parramatta now. It's against Canterbury for not uh, rolling away from the tackle play. 
Well, Graham, uh, I've referred to this breeze in, in one uh, phrase as being gale force, and just as I say that, the flag seemed to hang limply. Well, it is gusting, but, but, but when it does, it is, it is really gale force. It's an incredible decision by uh, Canterbury to run into this breeze. Uh, one can only think that they are basing it on what Bill said, that they're hoping that Parramatta certainly start to struggle in the second 40 minutes. Uh, it's a very, very confident one, though, if that's exactly the way Canterbury have approached it. But Parramatta, well, points are what they're after. A great opportunity now. It's got to be worth at least eight points. I think they're on the third tackle as they uh, sweep the ball back to the blind side for Price. And Price is inside the 10-metre line. I'm just watching Michael Stone's hand. That's the fourth tackle as Mosley swings it right for Sterling. He puts in the little kick. Lowy's going hard with Curry, and Curry rakes it over the dead ball line. So it's a line drop out to restart for Canterbury. We'll get a good idea of how strong this breeze is now with uh, the drop kick from Terry Lamb. He can drop kick from point to point, normally about 50. And he's kept it on a pretty low trajectory, but you could almost see the wind blowing it back. And look at Price, he's been tackled only 15 metres from the Canterbury line. Tunks was one tackler, Mark Bugden the other, and Tunks gave Price a real facial as we find Mosley tackled 10 metres out from the line now. What should happen from here? Parramatta are in great field position, and, and really Canterbury shouldn't be able to get out of there unless Parramatta come up with a mistake. It should be a case of holding it for five, grab a kick in goal and get back another line dropout. Mosley now sweeps it to Sterling. Sterling dummies to Price, gives it to Kenny! 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 Scores in the Paddington Hill corner! First try of the major semi. Scored by the man that Steve Mortimer this morning admitted was the man in the Paramount team that worried him most. In fact, Mortimer said in an interview on uh, another channel this morning, which I took great interest in, he said the trouble with Kenny is if you blink, if you simply blink, he's gone. And that's exactly what happened there. Two of the best five-eights in the world, Terry Lamb and Brett Kenny, and here they are head to head. The ball goes out to Kenny and he throws in the big step off the right foot. Too much pace for the cover defence and plunges in for the try. Michael Cronin, six metres in from touch, 22 metres out. Breeze with him, gets it away all right. Looks okay. They look at it, the touch judges. It's a goal for Michael Cronin. Six points to nil in favour of the Eels over the Bulldogs at the cricket ground. Right, let's take you to the Canterbury dressing room and uh, in there, Steve Folks with Graham Hughes. Steve, ankle injury problems. Uh... It didn't appear as though that came from last week's game. What's the story there? No, it's, it's pretty frustrating. Man. It's uh, going to come through very well last week, but yesterday at, uh, at training, yesterday morning, I, uh, I stepped in a bit of a pothole while training, and then uh, at the end, we had the barbecue after training, and I uh, wasn't watching where I was going, and I fell up the steps. Tough first half coming up here, and I thought an incredible decision to run into a near gale force wind out there. Yeah, I. I I didn't discuss it with, uh, with Steve or, or Ryan. I'm, I'm not sure what the, what the idea is. I guess they're uh, they're hoping to hold Parramatta out and then uh, can come home with a bit of, bit of a wet side. Ray, we might come back after this play. All right, Steve. This is um, Graham. This is Lee Beater playing it only on their second tackle. The way to Sterling, the running wall, the kick in behind. Ella! Ella! It's a try for Parramatta, Steve Ella! Well, where the... Where the hell he came from... Steve Eller, I'm not sure. It was a, a running wall from Parramatta, a player going in towards the play of the ball, and then the, the little kick by Sterling, and Eller goes across and grounds it. I'm not sure with what part of the body, but that doesn't really matter. It was forced with downward pressure. One of the ways to beat a fast-moving defence is to kick the ball in behind them. Sterling read it. Eller came from nowhere. There was nothing Curry could have done about that, and he dropped on the ball for the try. There it is again, the little kick by Sterling. Players running every which way, and Steve Eller picks up the try. Came from the same junior club as Brett Kenny. As far as memory serves me, and Mick Cronin from right in front of the uprights gets the extras, and Parramatta are leading Canterbury by 12 points to nil. Canterbury get it going again, and Ray Price, who, gee, that was, uh, that was uh, very, 
How's your father from Parramatta? Eventually, Father Price cleaned it up. Ball played just outside the 22 line. Away to Sterling and now Lee Beater. And you, you've seen it all before and you're about to see it again. Lee Beater and Bugden and those players will take this ball out. And then Sterling will position himself for the kick. But look at the big refrigerator. He's running like a man inspired. He said, he said in a press interview he loves playing against the little brother. In fact, he'd been uh, lacing his uh, drinks with Epsom salts, apparently. Well, the game's only been going now for, what, 24 minutes, but you wouldn't have to be too wise to work out that if Parramatta are the next scorers in this game, they're going to win it. Canterbury have got to be the side to put next points on the board. Twelve nil is the score right now. Of course, when Graham was talking to Steve Folks a few seconds ago, it was six nil. So let's go back to Graham with Steve, and of course, a different, probably complexion comes over the interview. Steve, you said that you felt the side would have to hang on to that six points and come back with the breeze of their backs. Is twelve too many? <laughs> it's more than more than we'd like, I'm sure. But uh, I haven't been outside for a while. But it's, it's, it looks fairly strong from in here. And, uh, Chance here for Canterbury. They develop the numbers. Delroy tackled by Mortimer. I haven't seen Steve Mortimer run like this since he's come back. Now it's Brett Kenny. One of the two try scorers. Kenny won, Ella won. Well, what, that, what that suggests to us, Ray, is that if Mortimer's doing the work of two men, which it looks like he is, there must be someone that's not pulling their weight. Now it's uh, Lee Beater. These two blokes, you know, you can... Every rugby league discussion you get into about Lee Beater and Bugden, the people will eventually get round to saying, yeah, but how long can they go for? And that's a very, very uh, worthwhile question. But at the moment, while Lee Beater and Bugden are running strongly and going forward, they build this enormous foundation for Parramatta to build on. O'Brien, tackled by Charles. Took a hard hit, Steve O'Brien, in the early minutes of the game. All stretched away now, and Ray Price goes up quickly on Michael Hagan. He's a talented player, Mike Hagan. On that occasion, though, he got the ball far too low. The ball has come out loose, and Terry Lamb... Oh, hang on! Hang on! Bugden's picked up some loose ball! Tried to get it away, but Steve Mortimer was there to save the day. So Steve Mortimer's unable to continue. Robinson. Megan. Tackled by Sterling. You see, here you're going to have an example of the dilemma that Canterbury have got. They elected to run into the Bruce, but now Parramatta have got them pinned. And unless it's a Canterbury, mis a, a Parramatta mistake, Canterbury can't get out of there, can they? They're going to, they can't kick the ball too far. Parramatta should virtually be able to run it back to where Canterbury kicked it from. Steve Waterman. Oh, knocked down by Muggledon, recaptured the by mistake. Parramatta. There's the mistake, Parramatta have got the ball and all the pressure's now back on. And here's Mosley throwing the dummy, he's eight metres out from the Canterbury line. Playing the ball back and there's six more back for them as it's spread to Ella. Ella saw an opening, it closed pretty quickly, he takes the tackle from Langmack and Tunks. Ray Price is the dummy half. That's the first tackle. A way to Sterling on to Delroy. Lamb read the play. He came channeling in, and Delroy is tackled 12 metres away from the Canterbury line. Should Parramatta score here? Well, of course, Canterbury, they'd be in dire straits, to say the very least, if they're not already. The dummy half is Muggleton. It's gone on to Cronin. The run around and the old man decides to go himself. Lee Beaters with the ball now. Pops it out the back for Ray Price. On to Sterling. Sterling zips inside. The ball goes away to Ella. If he can pass it, they'll score. Dunn comes at Chalmers. Chalmers, he's too good. Chalmers too fast for the big men. Parramatta scores again in a corner that Neville Glover well remembers in the grand final many years ago. At Parramatta, it's affectionately known as Neville's Corner. But today, it's presented them with two tries. One for Kenny and one for Glover. Well, Michael Cronin decided to use the option that his coach has given him. 
Instead of standing there like the Rock of Gibraltar, he took a couple of paces. Lee Beater's work was incredibly good. It went away to Peter Sterling. He got inside, I think, Terry Lamb. And then it went very quickly out from Delroy to Ella. And then Chalmers had too much pace. Dunn came across. He tried hard, Paul Dunn. Curry couldn't get there in time. Cronin with a, an acute angle kick. Let's it go, but it's coming away wide. In fact, an awful kick from Cronin. And Parramatta lead Canterbury by 16 points to nil. Now it's away to Delroy. Let's take a match comment from Graham Hughes, who's returned out of the sidelines. You're more or less picking my brains at this stage. Canterbury with 10 minutes left on the clock now in this first half. Badly need a try. A converted try will see them back into the game. Uh, at least give them an opportunity to still win this semi-final, especially with that guard at their backs. It remains, though, an incredible decision to run into the breeze. Sterling. Kick going down nicely for Curry, and Curry comes outside the 32 line. Sterling leads the procession down the ground. And there they are coming up, the runners from behind Sterling, Price and, and Ella. So it's back to O'Brien who swings it to Steve Mortimer. Now it's to Michael Hagan. This is Andrew Farrah, cut down by Kenny. Beautiful tackle by the 5'8". Steve Mortimer calls on Johnston to go ahead. And uh, for the limited amount of time Canterbury have had the ball in attack, they have highlighted a couple of times the, the Parramatta forwards. They're not going up to meet the attack. Sterling is tackled now. He might have got a kick where it hurts most. He might have. The first man to inquire about his health is Steve Mortimer, and that's something that, well, it does my old heart a lot of good to see it happen in rugby league. Steve knew where he caught him. Have a look at that. That's sportsmanship. comes well Mosley slipped in this uh, very muddy cricket pitch centre they covered it last night too I they must have had rain here during the day um well, like Roberts assures me they did well quite obviously they watered it this morning did they uh -huh, thank you now it's going to be a scrum all the players have been complaining about the cricket pitch being as hard as granite so they put water on it and great push this happens a big big push by Parramatta to win it against the feed played by um, Kenny and here's Price deciding to go for a run and that's a good hard tackle by Langmack he plays the ball back to Mosley they go blindside for Laurie and a penalty to Parramatta against Paul Dunn Here we are again with this situation. Parramatta will now find touch within the Canterbury Banks down quarter. And if, if, if Parramatta don't make a mistake, Canterbury will never get out into this wind. Just looking at Sterling. He's still not 100% Sterling. He's uh, still in a bit of pain. As the ball goes to Lee Beater. Both props have done their job. They haven't had much defence to do, but in attack they've been there and taken it up and made a lot of ground here's the next of them the bookends now they go blindside from Muggleton Kenny's with him the kick came off a Canterbury player Muggleton recaptures the ball so the ball has uh, gone from Mosley to Sterling and now to Laurie Laurie gets it out the back and it's come down to Canterbury so referee Stone says play on done 16-0 in favour of Parramatta Andrew Farrah tackled by Muggleton, Lee Beater and Bugden away for Steve Mortimer and now it's with Robinson Robinson intercepted by Kenny Kenny zip zip and oh I thought for a moment he was in again he must have 10 foot arms, Brett Kenny. Great tackle by Chris Mortimer. Put it down as a try saver from Chris Mortimer. This is Michael Cronin, held there again by Chris Mortimer. Well, surely somebody wasn't doing their job there. Mortimer has pulled off a try saver and then was required to stop Cronin 15 metres away. Sterling to Lee Beater. Lee Beater's tackled 10 metres away from the Canterbury line. 
to the left for Sterling. Sterling to Laurie. Laurie steps. He gets away from Dunn and he's uh, tackled about eight metres out from the line. Canterbury just missing far too much defence. That's the fourth tackle gone. As it goes to Sterling, it came off a Canterbury player. It went to Price. Price knocks on, comes back to Cronin. It'll be a scrum. Chip ahead by Sterling. Price had it for a couple of strides, but then lost it. And we're coming up with the scrum. And, uh, it's Michael Hagen tackled by a Price and also by a Lorry. And away they go to the left now for Dunn to reach the 22 metre line. And here's the scrums and penalties. 4 2 to Parramatta with one against the head. And the penalties 4 2 also to Parramatta. enormous rivalry between, between these two clubs. They've, they've shared the Premiership since the turn of the decade as growth tackles Farrah. But uh, there's been some, some sledging, probably more off the field than on the field with these two clubs. Their secretaries have had their little dabble in it. As to his Ray Price, Steve Mortimer throws the pass willy-nilly and uh, Canterbury fortunately come up with it. Knocked on by Muggleton. It'll be a scrum just outside the Canterbury 22 line. Scrum run by Canterbury, picked up by the lock lane Mac, a flick pass inside for Farrah. Farrah's tackled by Groth and Sterling and also Muggleton and plays it outside the 32. Away goes Mortimer. He gets a ball off to Dunn. Dunn is tackled by Laurie. And they're only about five metres away from the halfway line. The ball played back and Langmack sweeps it across and uh, it's Hagen who couldn't take it cleanly. It was a bad pass, but Hagen's still able to make ground. Now it's Terry Lamb. Now it's gone on to Curry. I don't think... Uh, yes, they will. Chalmers picked him up and Curry is hurt. Curry's torn a hamstring there. Just as he went down, he got hit from behind by Chalmers. He buckled back in the tackle. Tackle, and I'm sure he's done a hammy. There's no question that Curry is, uh, is hurt. You'll see him. See his face. It was wrinkled with agony as the hamstring appeared to go. I thought for a moment it was the way that Curry fell on him, but it seems that it happened a split second before the tackle. Well, Canterbury have had a bad record with fullbacks. They firstly lost Michael Potter. They then lost Fig Phil Sigsworth. Uh, Curry was the third man to come in. If they lose him, they haven't got much to back him up. So three and three-quarter minutes of time remaining, and Canterbury desperate for points before half-time. Langmack holding it back and working it to Steve Mortimer. Inside goes Farrar. Farrar's tackled three metres out from the line. Curry's gone in the back play. They'll have to replace him. Terry Lamb is the dummy half. The ball goes wide for Langmack. He sweeps it back for Robinson. But they've lost ground in that play. Five tackles gone. They may use the air here. Although it's on very wide to the left. The pass comes down. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Who was that? Kinney. Kinney on Peter Johnston. Have a look at it again on the slow-mo. There's Johnston, and then Kenny hit him and drove him to the ground. So the scrum goes down 20 metres out from the Parramatta line. Fed and won by the Eels, and Sterling says, uh, there's a gap here, I'll go myself. He finds Ella out wide, they beat O'Brien. Now it's Chalmers. Chalmers is tackled by Paul Langmack. Good work by Langmack to get across there. Curry was in at lock in that scrum, incidentally, as we find Delroy tackled. Well, Canterbury would have been a bit worried about if Parramatta had kicked the ball, Curry wouldn't have had the pace to get back and retrieve it. Mosley now is tackled. Eight metres his side of the halfway as Sigsworth comes out to the Sydney cricket ground. Ahead goes Lee Beater, tackled originally by Johnston and secondly by Robinson. Played back to Mosley and given off to Muggledon. Muggledon stabs the kick in. I think it's going to find it deep inside the 22. It does. In fact, only about 12 metres out from the Canterbury Bankstown line with two minutes of time to go. Curry comes off, Sixworth comes on in 15. Canterbury coming out with the scrum and Sixworth is tackled inside the 22. Well... 
I think I've made myself pretty clear on the Phil Sigsworth Tony Curry duel. Curry's a good player, but in, in my opinion, he's no better than Sigsworth. Muggledon, Cronin, Kenny, Ella, Gross. Up on the 22 line, Canterbury's into the ground. Ella going across the field now. To put it another way, I don't think Canterbury will lose anything with having Phil Sigsworth out there in the place of Tony Curry. Tenth season in grade for Phil Sigsworth as Mosley gets a pass out the back for Sterling. Sterling away for Laurie. Laurie taken by Robinson and Bugden. With the timepiece showing 61 seconds to go as it comes away to Sterling, then on to Kenny. Kenny throws the long ball, intercepted by Hagen. Laid ahead by Hagen now. Back for Andrew Farrar. Ray Price is injured. Through Morton, the long ball out to Lamb. Lamb throws the dummy, but he's cut down by Kenny. Played back for Steve Mortimer to give to Paul Dunn, and Dunn floats a pass off for Mortimer, then to Hagen. Hagen decides to go himself. Gets a pass inside for Steve Mortimer, and Mortimer is crashed to the ground by Delroy. To the left it goes to Peter Tungson. Again Delroy pulls off the tackle. Five gone, and again Delroy pulls off the tackle. It's gone to Sigsworth now, and he's tackled just outside the 22 line. So with only seconds to go, don't be surprised if Parramatta used the old Mitchell Cox, Dale Shearer ploy. Uh, Sigsworth was up in the line, he's fallen back now. But there's the siren, they didn't have any time anyway. And at half time, Parramatta leading Canterbury with three tries by 16 points to nil. Change has been made to the Canterbury team. Let's take you to the sidelines, Graham Hughes. That change late in the first half. Uh, Phil Sigsworth out there in uh, 15, replacing Tony Curry, and also Sandy Campbell on the sideline for Steve O'Brien. Thank you, Graham. Canterbury now running with the breeze for the duration of the second 40 minutes. And it's Ray Price who's tackled. There's, in fact, the tackle counts. Uh, Canterbury, 128 required. Parramatta, 114. Tunks and Price, the two top tacklers. And look at Sterling on 16. And that's a part of his game that, that people tend to forget about. And certainly, he's using up plenty of energy making 16 tackles. There's not much left for attack, but he seems to find energy to do that too. There he is kicking, keeping it on a fairly low trajectory as it goes down to Phil Sigsworth. And, and now it's Canterbury's turn to wheel and deal. And uh, Sigsworth is tackled by Sterling and uh, Kenny. All played back to Farrer, away to Langmack, and now it's Farrer again, and he's pulled down and tackled. Well, John Money would have had a pretty simple chat to Parramatta at halftime, wouldn't he, uh, Bill Anderson? Not a lot to say when you've got the ball, hold it for six tackles and control it as well as you can, and then tackle for six tackles. I think defence is going to be the key for the Eels. Well, the ball seemed to come loose from Peter Johnston. Price claimed it, and referee Stone rushed in and, and declared that the ball was lost in the tackle. Canterbury win the scrum. Sigsworth goes to the blind side, runs into Sterling, and Sterling together there with uh, Delroy make the tackle. They're on the halfway line now as Langmack goes ahead. He's pulled down around the boot laces by Muggleton. Bugden getting in for some of the action. Away to the left for Mortimer and on to Lamb, and he's over the halfway and finds Chris Mortimer. This is Sandy Campbell. Campbell taken by Chalmers and also by Price. Play is down on the Parramatta 32 line. Robinson goes ahead. He gets a ball back for Chris Mortimer. Chris Mortimer has lost the ball, and Parramatta's Bugden comes up with it. Mosley wants to stretch it quickly. It's gone to Sterling, away to Kenny. Kenny uh, is taken by Hagen, who came up quickly to turn Kenny back inside. Kenny plays it inside the 22. This is Delroy. You see probably plenty of dummy half running from Parramatta into the breeze. That would be, I, I would imagine, a hand-me-down from Jack Gibson to John Murney. And probably plenty of running down the blind side on the sixth tackle. I don't think they'll kick the ball all of the time. They will on occasions to keep the Canterbury defence back and stop them coming up. And on other occasions, they'll be looking to run it. Mosley's pass away to Laurie. This is Mark Laurie, 15 metres on his own side of the halfway. Five tackles gone. As Muggleton puts the kick in, he hooked it, and it's going down very deep into Canterbury's area, and uh, 
It's Sigsworth who's going to take it back past the 10-metre line. Mosley pursues, makes the tackle with Gross, and Sigsworth will play it. Away now for Hagen, and then to Steve Mortimer. This is Campbell. Campbell taken by Bugden and Muggleton. Steve Mortimer out from dummy half, and Big Bugden makes the chase and makes the tackle with Mosley. Play back to uh, Bugden, and now it's Tunks, and Tunks gets a one-handed to Langmack. Langmack makes ground. Six more tackles, says Michael Stone. And the ball is played by Paul Langmack. Hagen from dummy half looks to unload. He can't. He'll play at 10 metres on his side of the halfway. Away now for Steve Mortimer. Long ball for Sigsworth, who knocks on. Well, of course, you might have the gale at your back in the second half, but when you're chasing 16 points and playing catch-ups, uh, things just seem to be done with a, a little bit more fuss than normal, and, and mistakes come out of it. Here's Kenny slipping his way through, and Langmack just missed him, but Sigsworth tied it up. The ball played, and it's with Delroy, who's tackled by Langmack. Mosley. As the, the pundits continue to tell us that Elias and Simmons will make the tour, and the Cochrane might, along with Conescu, they all tend to overlook this young man, Mosley, who's had an enormous season. Who he is unloading blindside for Sterling, and now it's with the Chalmers. Chalmers on the 22 to Muggleton. Muggleton takes on Bugden, who makes the tackle, and it's five gone for Parramatta. Sterling will probably use the kick on Muggleton. Well, he's appealing that Mortimer actually struck the ball the, over the, uh, the, the touchline. The ball did hit Mortimer's leg, but I don't know that he played at it. So Sterling will feed. tries to sneak up the open side of the scrum base. Mosley's there for dummy half work. They're 10 metres out. If they score now, Parramatta, the semi-final is over. Well, they've already done something that Canterbury couldn't do in the first half of the win, and that's get the ball up this end of the field. Here's Ray Price, three metres out from the line. And that is... Uh, well, Price can't play on. looking at Paul Langmack as he's looking at uh, Ray Price getting attention as Langmack standing over a man who um, he's referred to as his hero so Price appears as though he's ready to play the ball now and it's with uh, Muggledon and oh blurry easy Now let me have a look and see how Ray Price is. Well, he's receiving attention from Terry Levy there and the trainer. But Mark Laurie has scored the try after a huge delay. It went simply to Muggleton and Laurie went charging into the gap. And Parramatta leading by 20 points to nil. Some beautiful late adjustment here by Parramatta. They waited until the ball was played and then Laurie and Delroy faded back to the blind side. That gave them the extras and Laurie charged over. Blame this at the right hand upright. Uh, it hasn't got the length and drops uh, away to the left and so no no adjustment necessary to the score 20 points to nil in favor of Parramatta over Canterbury Mortimer Hagen back inside for Mortimer tackled by Mosley and Lee Peter. Mark Bugden for one of his dummy half runs well, Mark uh, Marcus Cramp I'm just looking at his brother Jeff to see if he's showing any sympathy. He's down on his haunches, big Jeff. He's getting some oxygen back in the tanks. No, he's 
Big Jeff went for the water bottle. That's Mortimer. Robinson. Reading a story about Robbo and what he's trying to do for his, his late friend's wife and family. And by Jove, it's, it's a new, it's a different side of Jeff Robinson that everybody should read about. He's got a big heart of gold sitting inside that HFC jumper. Good on you, Robbo. Line side for Steve Mortimer over the halfway. Terry Lamb, they've stacked the blind side. Lamb's still going. Lang match with him. He puts the kick in. Kenny, it's uh, no knock on Kenny. I think you'll find it hit him right in the middle of the try. And you can forget about it. As I said yesterday, with uh, Gary Schofield, thank you, linesman, thank you, ball boys. Brett Kenny scores his second try at the Sydney Cricket Ground, something that has become habitual with Brett Kenny. Well, you'll see the kick by Terry Lamb. I should never I'm almost this. sure. I'm almost sure it hit him in the stomach. And uh, Kenny went bingo and took off. And, of course, when he sees open space, well, it's a matter of forgetting about it because he's just too fast. There he is, the try scorer, Brett Kenny. Two tries in uh, the three grand finals of Parramatta 1 in 81, 82, 83. In fact, he's, he's uh, continued to keep scoring these two tries at the cricket ground uh, it's almost become monotonous now price is still getting attention from graham graham richards who's called the team over unsuccessful from cronin 24 points to nil in favor of Parramatta. price is off Who's going on? Uh, Graham is a Jerd or who? Win or what? Steve Sharp coming out the gates right now. Kenny now working to the blind. Yeah, one, by Steve Mortimer and also by Phil Sigsworth. Mark Laurie. Lane Mack the top. Mark Laurie's been one of the achievers today for the Eels. He's one of those fellows that doesn't stand out. He doesn't shine, but he hasn't missed a tackle. He's done everything required of him in defence. And when it's been his turn to, to hit the ball up, he's been there. Play by Cronin. Lee Beater. Well, it can't be too far distant now before um, John Murney decides to bring his, his two props off. Unless, oh, of course, with the, do that. with the week's break, he might let them go with the full distance, Bill. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be more the way to approach it. Let them play the game out unless they're injured. So Sterling finding the line. I don't think he'll make any replacements. All right. 25 metres out. The scrum will go down. Steve Edge, by the way, is the, the new sales manager come coordinator. In fact, Steve Edge is the new Ron Massey at Parramatta. That job's only a week old for him. Doesn't look like Ron Massey, does he? No, he doesn't. A five stone too light is Kenny. Both men have got a very good knowledge of the game. Now Sterling. Long ball. Muggleton comes to Campbell. He did well, Campbell. He had to leave his wing. There was awful trouble behind him if he misses the tackle. Delroy sweeps it away to Laurie. Laurie kicks into the middle. Chalmers will score. Yes! Took it on the full and scores. Chalmers. Well, what a freakish try. Mark Laurie, who Bill Anderson had described earlier as being one of the game's big achievers, kicks in field. Chalmers backs him up, takes it on the full and goes. Bingo. Thank you. Great play this by Parramatta. They fired the ball back down the blind side again. It was fielded by Laurie. He realised that he didn't have the space to work into score himself. He heard the call on the inside from Chalmers. He kicked it, and Chalmers is a player with plenty of place. He took the uh, took the ball on the full and just fell down to do the rest. That would be doing Tony Chalmers the world of good, that feeling that he's, he's got there right now. He knows that his coach gave him the chance in front of Casado and Jackson for the wing job. I know Kelly's out of the team and, 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 and all of that, but Gillespie and Folks, those two names, they're the ones that come ringing home to me. 
A lot of hitting power missing. Oh yeah, the sledgehammers, they're not there today. Cronin's kick won't get uh, won't get over the crossbar into the breeze. No goal, 28 points to nil in favour of Parramatta. You're watching the NEC big game, major semi-final. Watch Andrew Farrah prepare to get us going. Let's go to Graham on the sidelines. What What is there left to be said about this Canterbury performance? I think you can start talking about next week against Balmain. Uh, I don't like Andrew Farrah on the wing for Canterbury Bankstown. I like him in the centre where he can come into a lot more of the play. Michael Hagan for mine, if he's going to be in the first grade lineup, he's not going to be playing 5 8 instead of Terry Lamb. I'd have him at full back. No, no bones about it. Steve Folks to come back, Peter Kelly to come back, and the big crunch if he's available for grand final. And if they get there, uh, David Gillespie gives them a much more balanced team. So here's Canterbury winning the scrum and Terry Lamb dummies to Steve Mortimer. He looked around for Phil Sigsworth, but uh, it was too late. And now it's, uh, it's Tunks who's tackled just inside the, the 10 metre line. Dummy half to Steve Mortimer. Away it goes to Terry Lamb, and on it goes to Michael Hagan. Hagan fading across the ground, cut down by Delroy. He's done all right back there today, Delroy. As, uh, it's Farrah who comes away from dummy half. But much as uh, I might sing the praises of Mick Delroy, I think Sterling would love to see Taylor out there. Uh, he doesn't need to be making this many tackles, uh, Sterling. Here's Robinson. It's a turnover. Nine eight the scrums to Parramatta. Five four the penalties to Parramatta. And two against the feed to Michael Mosley. Belmain and Canterbury uh, this year. I'm just trying to get the statistics, the statistics out on the two clubs head to head. But well, Belmain won both games, and 28 nil was the score in the second round. And that's the score line here at the moment with Parramatta leading Canterbury 28 to nil. Sharpest tackle. It's quite, quite incredible really. Balmain was sitting back there waiting for next Sunday and, and knowing that they might be playing a team that has um, had the drop on them for a long time now, Parramatta. Parramatta's given them some awful shellackings. And yet they, they are the team that Canterbury, according to their coach, uh, regarded as the big dangers. Balmain. Penalty to Canterbury is against one of the Parramatta tacklers for being in front of the kicker. That man, Mark Laurie. Incidentally, next Sunday, you'll be pleased to know, we'll have the complete two-hour coverage of the final. Starting at 6 o'clock, it'll go through till 8 o'clock. And that'll be followed at 8 o'clock by a half-hour preview of the grand final. We'll be able to get some interviews from the players who've competed in the final. Uh, which will be between Canterbury and Balmain, of course. And uh, we'll preview the grand final at 8 o'clock next Sunday night. Immediately following the two-hour telecast of the, the final between the Dogs and the, and the Tigers. A hand out the back for Langmack. They sweep it away to Dunn. But of course, some of these errors that Canterbury are making now are only simply brought about by the fact that they're trailing by such a margin. You wouldn't see them doing this if they were in front. And here's Langmack losing it and Sharp comes up with it. Parramatta getting some replacements ready, Graham. Well, Jackson and Casado moving down from the, uh, the dressing set out to the sideline. We haven't got who they'll be going on for. Mm. Lee Beater. Well, they won't come on for Lee Beater and Bugden, Bill, so you can rest easy. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Cronin is Cronin is one of them. Graham, take it. Kenny and Ella are the boys to come off. Kenny and Ella, eh? All being played by Delroy. This is Mosley. Sick work going back to the 10 meter line. Away from Mosley and in between Mosley and Ella, Sterling has to chase and make the tackle. Tunks. 
Terry Lamb. Lamb's inside the 32. Will he go all the way? He lofts the pass out for Andrew Farrar. And Canterbury are on the board. 28 points to four. Terry Lamb set this up by making the break off a short pass from Peter Tunks. Tunks went across. Ella couldn't uh, get him in time. And then Terry Lamb, he sees Eric Groth coming out of his right eye. Watch Groth come into your camera, into your screen. That meant that Farrah was unmarked. So he lofted the ball out and Farrah goes into that Paddington Hill corner. 28 points to four in favour of Parramatta. A good try, this one, to Canterbury. I suppose it was only a matter of time before Parramatta made a mistake in defence. Tunks popped up a ball to Lamb, and then it was a bit of tit for tat. Lamb beat uh, Kenny as easily as he'd beaten him in the first half. Lamb couldn't do it on his own. He threw the ball over the top to Farrer, and Farrer goes in for the consolation. I'm just watching Brett Kenny. When he came from the field, he went for a long jog down to the, uh, the trainers who've got the walkie-talkie back to the coach. He's delivered a message to them. Graham's with him now, Brett Kenny. Well, I'm pretty sure he'll talk to Graham. Let's watch the kick from Farrah. It left the boot well. It's a goal by Andrew Farrah. Nice kick from a wide, wide point. You guys were telling me uh, at the last game that the, that fortnight's break was going to be terrific for you going into the semi-final. Injury-wise? Yeah, it was. You know, I feel 100%. You know, I just... I had my ankle a little bit out there today, but I could step all right, and uh, I know Sterlo felt a lot better too after the week's break, so hopefully we can have another one next week. Parramatta weren't going to say no when Canterbury offered your first use of that pretty strong breeze in the first half. Well, I think what happened, we were going to run against it, and uh, as usual, Price had lost a toss, so we had to run with it. I think we are going to run against it if possible. What's the thinking behind all of this? It's been happening right through the semi-finals. Well, I don't know. John Maney asked me um, before the game, said, did I rather, rather, rather run against the window with it? And, I said it didn't worry me, so I don't know actually what they're thinking was. Well done today and good luck in a fortnight. Thanks very much, man. Ball coming loose in the play and Parramatta's Laurie plays it. It's going away to Jackson. Jackson. Jackson tackled on the halfway line. Billy. Billy Johnston is warming up for Canterbury. What's going on down there, Graham? Well, Billy's made his way out in the field now in 22 for Mark Bugden, and, and Atkins has moved to the sideline, I believe, uh, to cover Mick Delroy, who's to come off with a bruised forearm. Laurie getting a pass back for Sharp, but the ball came out the back, and uh, let's see who's got it. It's Mosley who plays it. As it comes away now to Sterling on tackle number five, Muggledon runs hard and gets the ball to Chalmers. Chalmers puts in the centre kick. Underneath it, though, is Sigsworth, and Sigsworth is tackled there by uh, Cassato. So the old brigade, if you can use that word, Kenny and Ella, replaced by the heir apparent, or, or people who certainly will join them in the Paramount back line in the not too distant future, Cassato and Jackson. Robinson plays on the Canterbury 22. 28 points to six. Parramatta just, well, they're in Angel Gear now. They're just coasting down the other side of the hill. As Lamb lofts the ball over to Chris Mortimer. Then it goes on to Sexworth, away to Sandy Campbell. Campbell turns it back inside. That was touched by Parramatta. It should be six more. He gives six more tackles to Canterbury. Good ruling. Getting very dark at the cricket ground as um, the people in the outer with no cover, they scurry for the the grandstands and some ominous uh, weather coming up out of the south and away they go tackle was Casado now it's Johnston Langmack away from Mortimer out now for Johnston Billy Johnston and Peter Johnston both out there at the moment turnover yes played by Lee Peter I know that uh, Parramatta fans will tell you that they came here to the cricket ground today expecting to win by 22 points <laughs> but they're probably telling you an official lie I don't think too many would be brave enough to stand up and say that they expected this match to be won so convincingly by either team fair comment Bill very fair comment but uh, on what we've seen today I think we've seen the 1986 premiers playing and uh, they're wearing blue and gold. This is Muggles.
Sterling. His kick. No spot on again. Well, any other of probably five players that do that, you say, what a great kick by, by Billy Bloggs or Fred Merck. But if Peter Sterling does it, you just say, yeah, good kick by Sterling. He just has to, he has to keep doing it. He has to live at a very, very high rate of profile, Sterling. So does this bloke feeding the ball, Steve Mortimer. Terry Lamb. There's a siren, it's over mercifully for Canterbury. All they can think about now is to get on with the job of playing Balmain and for their sakes, a chance to redeem their reputation against Parramatta here in a fortnight. But from the positive side of it, Parramatta romping away with the major semi-final, 28 to six. They scored no fewer than six tries. Kenny two, Chalmers two, Ella and Laurie one each, and Cronin an off day with the boot kicking two, but it probably wasn't a day for goal kickers. Farrah was the man to put the six Canterbury points on the board, but as I said, Parramatta winning by 28 to six. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports in partnership with the National Rugby League. The stage is set. This summer, Australia's best are coming home. Goal! Here we go! He's a headline act in every way. One of the star attractions. How about that? The PGA Tour of Australasia. Every event live, only on Fox Sports. Sit back and enjoy the action. There are rules about what you see on TV. The industry association, Astra, has developed codes of practice covering programming on subscription television channels like this one. To see the codes, visit the Astra website at astra.org.au.